you want to say hello? Charlie wants to say hello. <laughs> They're right there. Do you see them? Right here. She's looking for you guys. <laughs> All right. Hi friends, I'm Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to share my November book haul with you and I do have quite a stack. Most of these came from the book exchange which I talked about in a separate like bonus <laughs> book haul last month and I talked about having books already for this month. Yeah, I'm just really excited about these books. Let's go ahead and dive right in. I also picked up some poetry this month. That's what we're starting with. I picked up this copy of Boat Burned by Kelly Grace Thomas and I got this from Yes Yes Books which is a publisher in Portland, Oregon. I'm always looking for like alternatives to Amazon that still has like really good prices but I picked this up from Yes Yes Books in Portland, Oregon. Like I ordered it online from them and they sent it to me. It did take a while to ship but with COVID shipping and stuff like that it still does take a while um, but they specialize in poetry, fiction, and experimental art and this poetry collection the cover just really like spoke to me and I think it has a lot to do with like themes of water and stuff like that like according to all of the information here on the back but I'm just really excited to give this poetry collection a go and I'll probably be supporting this publishing um, house for poetry in the future. I will link their website down below if you are looking for a place to buy some poetry. Um, my two book of the month books that I got I picked the contemporary romance and the thriller. I couldn't choose, so I just picked both. Um, so This Time Next Year by Sophie Cousins is actually on my end of the year TBR, so I am hoping to read it before the end of the year. Um, this is about two people born on the same day, New Year's Day, but they are, their mothers were in competition to have their baby first, to have her baby first um, and one of them was the actual like prize baby you get your picture in the paper you get like a check for money and then like that just launched them to have like a really lucky life and then the other one not so much so they keep like bumping into each other and stuff like that and I guess how many chances um, to meet your perfect match and it centers around like New Year's Day and a New Year's party um, and it says and explores the way fate leads us to the people we least expect, no matter what the odds. So I think it'll just be really like a charming story to read at the end of the year. And then I picked up Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. And I've never read anything from this author before, but oh, these girls are going missing and the husband is supposed to be dead, but he's missing as well. And I don't know, it just seems really like interesting. Um, but it takes place in a small town and there's unexplained disappearances. So yeah, I picked up this um, book at Books A Million, which we don't have locally anymore and I really, really miss it. But I went to go visit a friend, Jacqueline, and yeah, I we both picked up copies of this book. We're hoping to like maybe buddy read it, but we got this in the bargain price section of Books A Million and it is called Paper Ghosts by Julia um, Heberlin. And this is about a obsessed woman that is going on this 10 day road trip with this guy sitting in the passenger seat. And they're going to explore these like cold case locations. Like there's like these photographs and they're going to the locations or something like that. Don't really know that side of things. But what I do know is that she thinks that the man that's sitting beside her is the person that killed her sister. It does have photographs in here. It also has like other little like, I don't know, that looks like a poem or something like that. And little like notebook um, pages. And now all the rest of these books came from the book exchange in Virginia Beach. So the first one I got here is Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. This novel combines historical fiction elements with magical realism and it tells a story about these people are sitting around telling stories and then a man walks in with a girl who's like dead but then she like comes to life or something like that. This is definitely outside of my comfort zone but I've heard really good things and it has a really high rating almost a four stars with like 50,000 ratings so yeah obviously a lot of people like it it is out of my comfort zone but it sounds really intriguing with like 
the mystery of what's happening and stuff like that and the storytelling element. So we shall see. Educated by Tara Westover and this is a nonfiction memoir autobiography of Tara's life. Um, she was born to the survivalists that lived in the mountains of Idaho and she never stepped into a formal classroom until she was 17 years old. Her parents didn't believe in doctors or hospitals so anything that happened to her or anybody in the family family. Um, they kind of just took care of it themselves. And I've heard there's some pretty like sad things that happen and it would have been better for her to probably go to a doctor. Um, they also didn't believe in like just mainstream society or anything like that. So I've heard that it is like a little heartbreaking and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to this one because I do like these memoirs that deal with like people's darker lives and darker themes and topics. A Good Neighbor. And this one is by Teresa Ann Fowler. I think that's how you say the author's name there. This one explores a lot of great themes and topics such as like race and class and star-crossed lovers. Um, it basically tells sort of like what makes a good neighbor. I know there is like biracial rep in here and stuff like that. So I'm just really looking forward to that one. And it takes place in like a small town in North Carolina, a tight-knit North Carolina neighborhood. And I picked up another book outside of my comfort zone, The Dutch House by Ann Pratchett. And I've already posted this one on my Instagram. I actually got this book sitting right over there. I was like, why not show it? I got this book and this dress on the same day. And guys, it even has like the bluebirds from this on the dress. Let me find one. Well, there's one bird. Can you see it right there? Let me find, yeah, it's just so, it's got the birds. Oh, here, like right there. So it just, it matches so well, which is freaking me out. But yeah, I literally like got this and then like two doors down at a Goodwill, I got this dress. So match made in heaven. Um, this talks about it, a house, like a particular house and like its inhabitants. And it's, I think a brother and a sister mainly, um, and just their childhood home and how they can't really leave it like physically, emotionally, and all of that. So another historical fiction story, literary fiction story, um, a little outside my comfort zone, but I've heard great things about the audiobook, so I definitely want to pick it up. Next up, I found a copy of The Great Gatsby in almost perfect condition. The front, the side, the pages all look great. It does have a couple of little like things on the back, but really great condition like classic. This is the one that everybody talks about when they think of um, F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is set in the 1920s and you follow a wealthy um, person named Jay Gatsby and he throws these lavish parties in the 1920s on Long Island and he's falling in love with Daisy Buchanan and yeah just sounds like a really good time. It's been a long long time since I have read this. Um, yeah. I can't tell you how many years it's been since I've read this. But and then I picked up this student's vegetarian cookbook. Um, these are ones that like college students will get or whatever if they're, um, you know, like living in a dorm or living on their own for the first time and they need to know how to like throw together. So it has like really easy, like it has a low prep time, low cook time. Um, and it has just like easy ingredients, like nothing like specialty or weird or strange or something that you couldn't find at basically any grocery store. Um, so they have everything from pizzas to like salads, taco salad, pasta salad, lentil soup, split pea so soup, roasted garlic, salsa, overnight oatmeal, fluffy vegan pancakes. But I am a very lazy cook, but I kind of cook the same things all of the time. Um, so I thought this would be a nice way to try out some recipes where I don't have to worry about like getting a whole bunch of special ingredients. So even though I am not a student, I am still a student of cooking. All right, I got a couple more poetry collections. I picked up Citizen. They actually had a copy, a couple copies of this there, but this is one I've been wanting to get to for a while. It does have photography in here as well. It's nice glossy pages. This one does tackle um, racial aggressions in life and social media. Um, 
And even if I think that I'm not going to enjoy it, because I have heard people say that it wasn't like their cup of tea, but the, the themes and stuff like that were very important. So I feel like even if I don't enjoy it, I'm going to be glad that I read it because like I need to read things like this. I also picked up Fast Animal, which when I picked it up, I didn't know it at the time, but this poet, it's a black poet, and he actually lives in Norfolk, Virginia, which is like my neighbor, like it's literally like 10 minutes down the road, and he teaches at ODU, which is one of the local colleges here. So um, I thought that was amazing that I was able to pick this up. I don't really know like too much what this is about, but um, I just picked it up in the poetry section and saw that it was a black poet, and I'm trying to read more poetry by um, black poets. So I picked that up, and then He's a local guy, so how cool is that? But Watching You by Lisa Joel, which is a mystery thriller about a small town where everybody has secrets and there seems to be this like mysterious circumstances surrounding like this beloved teacher. And I'm not quite sure what happens, but I think like some people love him. Some people think he's not as squeaky clean as he comes off. So we shall see. And it has my hair in there, so that's delicious i also picked up another kind of recipe book this is another like easy book um i don't know if you saw my vlog that i did over halloween weekend where i made that dump cake and it was like a tiktok recipe that recipe came directly from this book um and other people that have made tiktok cakes have mentioned this and it's just a very easy um dump and go ingredients um like this one um, blueberry vanilla cake. So you take frozen blueberries, sugar, cinnamon, vanilla cake mix, and butter. Boom. Done. So it's super easy ingredients. And yeah, I definitely want to try some of these. It doesn't have as many um, pictures as I normally like in my recipe books, but the ones that they have are pretty great. The last book is a comic a graphic novel, Morning Glories Volume 1 by Nick Spencer. And this story takes place at a um, prestigious prep school and six new students arrived at the school and there's behind closed doors there is a like mystery mysterious evil lurking and they feel trapped and they're trying to discover answers and all of that so yeah let me get that flip through of that and what I love is that I get these really discounted. I only paid $5 for this. But that's all for my November book haul. I definitely got some books I'm really excited about. I also got some quite outside my comfort zone that I still want to give a go. But that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me know which books you got this month and which ones you're the most excited to hear me talk about. I'll see you guys again in another video very soon. Bye!